Welcome back to Backyard Ballistics. Today we're starting again another series, which is going to be called Ballistic Science, and this episode's subject is the physics of recoil. I will give you a very simple yet physically correct way of calculating recoil that you can use to quickly and accurately compare the recoil of different guns even before firing them for the first time. You will also understand why even though the gas is exert exactly the same force on the bullet and gun, only the former is able to do damage. Oh, and don't be scared, I've prepared these lessons to get all of you to understand by the end of the video, independently from your background knowledge. You've probably heard lots of discussions regarding gun recoil, talking about the fact that lighter guns recoil more, muzzle brakes mitigate the phenomenon, etc. But most likely, none of them has ever given you a quantitative way of determining or at least comparing the recoil of different firearms. Also, we all know that there's always an equal and opposite reaction, but what does this refer to? Does it mean that the gun recoils with the same energy of the bullet? Of course not. For now, let's consider guns that respect the following three hypotheses. The effects due to the mass of the gases are negligible, and yes, I misspelled it. This is accurate if a muzzle brake is used, or if the powder mass is little compared to the bullet's mass, like in handguns and shotguns. No angular momentum involved. This is accurate if the center of mass of the gun is sufficiently close to the bore axis. If these hypotheses are respected, the formula I'm going to give you will give exact results, but even if they are not, you can still use it and get accurate results, just you will be ignoring a few other phenomena, and in order, the recoil due to the gas's inertia, the barrel rise, and the difference between energy of recoil and felt recoil. Let's get into it. Give me 4 minutes and you will know the formula and what it means. If you are not interested in the derivation of the formula, just skip the next 2 minutes of video. First, let's clear these quantities. A force is the interaction between bodies that, when unopposed, will change their velocity. If the gas is pushing against the bullet, the breech of the gun will feel the same force acting against itself. This is the equal reaction we were talking about. The propellant gases push the bullet and the gun in opposite directions with exactly the same force. Now, momentum is the quantity obtained by multiplying a body's mass by its velocity. These are the symbols I am going to use for the amounts we need. So the momentum of the bullet will be m times v and the one given to the gun will be mg times vg. The application of force for a certain amount of time will change the momentum by an amount equal to the product of the force by the time it is applied. But of course the time it is applied is the same both for the bullet and the gun, and we know the forces are equal and opposite. Consequently, the gun gets a change in momentum that is numerically equal to the change of momentum of the bullet. This result is also known as conservation of linear momentum, and it is the foundation of today's lesson. We can indeed use it to easily calculate the velocity at which the gun recoils, which will be handy later. And yes, I screwed up again. Anyway, in regard to the momentum, the gun gets exactly the same amount as the bullet. Luckily though, it is not the momentum that causes damage, but the kinetic energy, which is calculated with this simple relation. Half the mass times the velocity squared, both for the bullet and the gun. The kinetic energy of the recoiling gun is what we want to calculate. It is the amount of energy we have to dissipate after each shot, and hence is our way of telling how painful the recoil is gonna be. We call it recoil energy. Here comes the part you were waiting for. You can calculate the recoil energy very easily. Just multiply the bullet energy by the ratio between the bullet and gun masses. All what I've told you until now is only needed to justify this relation, which is the only thing you will have to remember. You can use the units of measure you prefer, as long as you use the same for both the mass of the bullet and the gun. Here I will be expressing all in kilos. Let's do some practical calculations. I picked some significant guns, you will soon discover why. First off, a 9x19 revolver, like the Smith & Wesson 986. We've got a 120 grain bullet at a kinetic energy of about 500 joules from a gun weighing 0.9 kilos. Just follow the formula and we get a result of only 4.3 joules of energy. That's why you better stay behind the gun than in front of it. Next, a 45 ACP with the same kinetic energy of the 9x19 with the usual 230 grains bullet from a gun weighing 1.15 kilos. We repeat the calculation and we get a recoil energy of 6.5 joules. That's interesting. 
The kinetic energy of the bullet is the same as the 9mm, but the recoil energy is much higher. Now for a full-size 357 revolver, we get a recoil energy of 7.9 joules. What if we shoot the same cartridge out of one of those very lightweight snubby revolvers? Of course the energy of the bullet is reduced by the short length of the barrel to 600 joules. Still, we get a much higher recoil energy than the full-size revolver at 13.6 joules. Notice that we have almost halved the useful energy and almost doubled the harmful one. That's the price for reducing weight. Now let's quickly do some rifle calibers and I will give you the last plot twist for today. A typical hunting 308 Winchester rifle with muzzle brake fitted to it generates a recoil energy of 9.7 joules, while a typical 338 Lapua generates, not including the mass of the scope, a typical recoil energy of 19 joules. And what about a good old pump action shotgun? Well, a typical Mossberg 590, shooting a typical 500 grains slug, will generate 31 joules of recoil energy, 50% more than the 338 Lapua. In fact, with the exception of big and dangerous game rifles, a typical 12 gauge shotgun is the most recoiling gun. Here are the results plotted in a graph. Notice how our lightweight revolver has much less energy and much higher recoil, and how the shotgun has very high recoil energy, but not so high bullet energy. Anyway, that's all for today. Let me know in the comments if the explanation was clear enough. See you next time. Bye.